Hey everybody, Ben here from DMC Films. I'm back with my second tutorial on mountains, and this one picks right up where the other one left off. Now, the first tutorial, what we did is we took uh, the basic form of the mountain, just getting the, a layer of black down. Now, what I've already done is I've added a shadow layer on the right hand side, and that's a very dark, sort of a dark, sappy green color, which you really can't even tell uh, that it's there right now. And the technique I'm going to be showing you for the highlights is basically the same one I used for the, for the, uh, for the shadows. So you can just use that in your own work. Now with this particular video, what I've already done is I'm actually speeding up the video ever so slightly and I'm adding this narration in later. I found that this actually works a lot better for my tutorials and I think I'm going to continue using this process down the road. Now what co the color I have now is sort of a... I guess it's pretty close to what you might uh, buy in the store as a, uh, a burnt sienna. Uh, but I make all of my, uh, my brown colors uh, by just mixing various other colors to make them. Now, what I'm, the process I'm doing here is I'm holding the brush uh, much further back, uh, much further back as well from uh, what you would probably hold a pencil. Uh, that way you're holding the brush lighter. And what I'm doing is basically just holding uh, very loosely and letting the brush and the paint just sort of drag along on the, uh, on the canvas. Now what this does is it allows sort of a natural breaking effect for the paint, and it creates the illusion that you have little variation within your rocks. Now this process also works with a, with a knife actually very well. Uh, in this particular piece I'm not using a knife just for the sake of uh, really wanting to get those, those fine details. Uh, and I'm using my, uh, my normal uh, number 18 filbert, and, uh, filbert brush in this piece. I use this a lot for trees, but in this particular uh, instance that I was able to get that rounded uh, edge to get sort of a rounded edge for my rocks as well. And whether you use a, a knife or whether you use a brush, you want to pay attention to uh, the shape of the knife and the brush because that will uh, inevitably kind of shape your mountains as well. Now what I'm doing here is I'm adding a little, adding my, my brown a little bit further over. And that's just to add a uh, sort of an illusion of, of uh, just different layers within the rocks, and, and it keeps it uh, keeps it away from being a, sort of a straight vertical line. Now, I'm basically explaining here uh, that you can add uh, another sort of peak or, or area to your rocks without actually having uh, a plan mapped out for it. And that's really what I'm doing here, is that I'm adding... Uh, this sort of, I guess you call it a secondary, uh, secondary peak, secondary layer uh, inward, and I didn't actually have a shadow placed for this piece, and uh, what that uh, has sort of allowed me to do is create uh, another, another layer in terms of uh, foreground, middle ground, background, and uh, it's it's really just the same technique every time, it's just kind of dragging that paint, uh, keeping, making sure my my highlights are in line with where my light source is, which is on the left, so my highlights will be on sort of the left side of the mountain. And mountains generally, if you notice, when you see other people painting them, you'll notice that uh, so they sort of have two sides to them. They have a light side and a dark side. Not to make a Star Wars reference or anything, but uh, basically it's, it's you, you highlight the, light, the side where your light source is coming from, and you darken the one on the opposite side. It's a pretty basic technique. Uh, it's generally how things work. Uh, whether or not you use my techniques uh, down the road, uh, nonetheless, you will find that you'll be using uh, the you know light versus dark. Uh, I mean that's that's a standard a standard rule for pretty much any kind of thing that you're adding highlight and shadows to. And I'm just finishing this up right now, and I'm going to be expanding the mountain on the right there, ever so slightly with that, with that uh, darker brown. And that's generally, I, I'm, I did that, it was, it was sort of a decision, sort of in the moment, just to make it, uh, make it more of a highlighted scene. I mean, this is a, this is a, in daylight, and I, and I don't want that real dark uh, back side to the mountains. Now, I went to get my titanium white showing that right now. Uh, I can get it centered. There it is. And uh, in, that, in this instance, I'm just adding regular titanium white to uh, 
my mixture of brown. And uh, I, I pulled it up here just to show you the sort of the proper mixture of that. I'm not adding a whole lot of that brown, I'm adding a lot more white to uh, allow it to be a, a much brighter uh, tone. Just loading up the, the paint on the brush there. Now again, we go back in with the same technique. And what it does, what do, you, what do you do here? You may want to make sure your paint goes a little bit to the edge. Now my my underlayer of the black uh, mountain is actually still a little bit tacky. And what you'll notice is that my paint actually is mixing a little bit with that black, which you don't generally do not want to happen. Uh, it can add, uh, again, you know, so that illusion of, of depth and with, with the rocks. But generally speaking, because I'm using acrylics, I should have let this dry first and gone back in later. And when you when you do this piece, please let your layers dry in between uh, application of your paint. And if you notice, I'm not taking uh, this the second layer of highlights nearly as far over. And that's you know for, really for a specific reason is that uh, I keep I keep mentioning uh, this thing of layering and depth, and it's you know that foreground, middle ground, background. Uh, even though this is all sort of on one ground, you could say, but even within the mountain itself, there's that four middle and background. And that's basically shadow, uh, under highlight, and over highlight. It's basically the same thing. And, and I watched a lot of Bob Ross when I was a kid, the old PBS painter, and, and he would say in this instance that you can decide where you want uh, your rocks to be. And, and that's really true, you know. I mean, one thing you want to do before you go out and paint is, is see uh, pictures of rocks and mountains, and if, if you can't get out and see them in real life, just to see kind of how they sit, how they how they're formed. And one thing a lot of people will do is when they make mountains is they have a tendency to use plain white for their highlights, and what that does is adds a terrible illusion of snow. And even when, if you are adding snow, making snowy mountains, what you'll realize is that you'll need a, a shadow color, and a, lot of, and a lot of times you'll see blue used for the shadow color uh, mixed in with that white. But yeah, I, I would say for the mistake, if you're, if you're not going for a snowy environment, and, and this is going to be a tropical, tropical environment piece, then what you'll need to do is add sort of more of a brown or, or more of a black to your, to your mouth. Now what I'm explaining here, as a final note, I'm just going to wrap this video up, is that I'm adding, later I'm going to be adding grass to this, which cleans up the, uh, cleans up the base and, and really gives it a full finished piece. Well, for more paintings, for more films, for more art videos, for more music, please stay tuned to the DMC Films channel here on YouTube. This is Ben, signing out.